liquid football, then falling asleep in the second half, and then just doing defensive mistakes. It's been a great Sunday. Hello and welcome to another episode of Holly Hot Spurs and today I'll be talking about that 3-3 draw against West Ham. If you're new to the channel please put a like on this video, call me you for the game below and hit that subscribe button. Today we had a lot of high hopes. International break is over and we were all looking forward to club football. We saw the lineup come out, now there was a lot of talk this week that Bale would be featuring in it. We all kind of knew he probably wouldn't start, and starting he did not. We had a lineup of Larissa Serge Goal, Serge Aurier over Matt Doherty, Toby, Sanchez, that I really don't like, but we'll get onto that. Regulon. We then saw Hoiberg as our CDM with Sissoko and Ndombele playing as a centre mid role. So I was really excited to see Ndombele, like I've said, every time he's come on or has started for us in recent times, he has looked exciting. You can see Birdwin, Sonny and came up top. On the bench for once, it's actually a bench that I actually feel quite scared of if I was in opposition. Which I know is words or a phrase I've never thought I'd ever say. We'll see with Bale on the bench and Vinicius. The likes of Lucas also on that bench so yes we had a lot of options to come on and do some business now i must admit when this game kicked off i was driving home from football after a 1-0 win today so i did unfortunately miss the goal which happened in quick succession which was 45 seconds take a look at this Harry Kane, the master of all things lately, pings a ball that's further than the halfway line into a running son. Sonny takes the touch, bang, back of the corner, 45 seconds in, already one new up. I'm not going to lie, I think we're going to be living lavish this game. Little did I know when the second half came along, that all changed. But anyway, 45 seconds, a lovely play of what more to come. And later, we didn't have to wait too much longer for the next goal. In eight minutes, this business happened. Nice little bit of tiki tacky football on the edge of the box. Kane receives the ball, takes a touch, nutmegs Declan Rice. As he does that, it's another touch, bang, straight in the back of the corner. We're 2 0 up in eight minutes, and my god, I don't know what to do with myself. In eight minutes, we're 2 0 up. And then, to my surprise, we only had to wait another eight minutes because this happened in the 16th. Sonny finds the ball, plays it out to Regulon. Regulon, with a first time pinger, pings it back post and across to a lurking Kane. Kane rises like a salmon, heads it top bins. My god, it's 3 0 after 16 minutes. What is going on? Someone has possessed these players to come out of the firing blocks ready and raring to go. Regulon is different gravy. There, I've said it, I've done it. Beautiful stuff by Regulon. Like I say, Every game he plays, I just feel a lot happier with him at left back over Davies. Like I said, I think squad rotation will mean that Davies will come in now and again, but when Regulon plays, I know we're going to score something or something's going to come of him bombing down that left wing. I'd also like to highlight Tang Guy and the Doble. I said every time he starts or every time that he gets on the pitch in recent times, the man has majestic feet. And majestic feet he does. Today he was commanding in his area, he was finding passes left, right, and centre, had flicky feet he there, here, there, and everywhere. But unlike some, his passes do pull off. To be fair, in the first half, West Ham didn't really do much. I'm not going to lie. 35th minute, they did have a chance where Fornells tries to ping a ball into the box, but Sanchez blocks it. I think that's the only good thing that Sanchez managed to do the whole game. On the 42nd minute, Ndombele fires a ping a ball, a killer pass over the top of the back of the defence of West Ham to Harry Kane. But unfortunately for Harry Kane, he just doesn't get his touch right and it goes out for a corner. But again, that vision from Ndombele is adding more aspects to his game week in week out. Half time whistle goes and we are 3-0 up. It's a madness. I think to myself, okay, we're 3-0 up. We're sitting pretty. But do I want us to stop going for goals? No, I don't. Because when we stop going for goals, it all goes a bit pear-shaped. And I hate the fact that I'm a jinx, but I like to say I was right because second half, it kind of went a bit downhill. Second half, we didn't really come out of the blocks. We kind of let West Ham relax and settle on the ball a lot more allowing and making us make silly mistakes like i said all through the second half there were silly fouls here left right center it was just an absolute mess i know we have to take fouls sometimes to slow the game down 
but it was already slow to start with in the second half. We just weren't on our A game. This was evident in the 49th minute when Antonio managed to break away from Sergio, I think it was, puts a ball in, and Fornells is unmarked at back post, but luckily for us, it heads it straight over. For me, that was a sitting duck, and he should have really scored there, because we it was unmarked. But luckily for us, we got away with it. In the 71st minute, we see that Bergwin comes off, and so does Ndombele. I thought Bergwin and Ndombele had a brilliant game, especially Ndombele. Like I said, his touches are amazing. Each game he's playing, the more minutes he gets in the tank, the better he is becoming. They come off, and who do we see? This man. Nostalgia fills are through the roof. Mr. Gareth Bell is back at Wyatt's Hearts Lane. He comes on for Ndombele, and Winks also comes on for Bird. 78th minute, we see a bit of lovely play again between the two that have a mad connection at the moment. A bit like this picture kind of says it all. We see that Sonny passes the ball to Kane, and Kane first time whips it in back post. It unfortunately hits the woodwork and doesn't go in for a goal. We could have been 4 0 up in front at this point. We then see Sonny come off for Lucas in the 79th minute. Now we've only got 10 minutes left, and you'd think we were high and dry. No, in the 82nd minute, we give away a silly free kick. They whip a ball in. Wemmer, I think his name is, is back at back post. So Soko doesn't jump with him, and he heads it in the goal. We're now 3-1. And I'm thinking, here we go, lads. Three points are going down the drain here. And down the drain they go. Because in the 83rd minute, not long after the first goal, Laurel puts a ball in. And Sanchez, Sanchez, who has played awful the entirety of the game, that is really starting to piss me off, heads it into our own net. To be honest, it was a lovely finish, bottom corner. But mate, that's in the wrong net. You just clear that, straight forward, you don't turn your head so it goes into the back of the net. Anyway, it's now 3-2 and I'm feeling living. In the 91st minute, I thought my nostalgia levels would go through the roof and I thought I'd actually be able to settle my heart because Bale receives the ball, he takes it around one player, does like a toe tap, gets through on space, has a shot and it goes wide. Man looks knackered after that, not going to lie, but that could have really sealed the game. I'm not saying that Bale, sh but I thought Bale could have scored that and I thought he should have, with the talent he's got, the way that he managed to get around those players and they just couldn't finish a shot, kind of... It did make me feel a bit sad, not gonna lie. And then from that, we give away another silly free kick. The ball comes in, and then my dreams shatter. Take a look at this. I can't even comment, that's just an utter whiz-bomber. Once again, we're giving away needless fouls. I mean, there's like a minute to bloody go. And all fairness to West Ham, we stepped off the gas. They came out second half fighting. We costed ourselves once again, and we come away with a point. Lovely jubbly. It's good that my bell shirt didn't arrive today, because I wouldn't be very happy, let's put it that way. And I am also a jinx, like I said, I didn't get home in time. I was obviously Spurs scored their goals pretty early on, but I watched every single bloody West Ham goal, so that's great. I'm gonna, yeah, maybe I just shouldn't watch Tottenham games anymore. But anyway, regardless, like I said, that's three points down the drain. Um, I can't say anything about that Lanzini goal. That was, it was, it was a whiz bomber, a, a firecracker basically. So yes, congrats to West Ham for getting your point. Not congrats to us for chucking away a 3-0 lead. People are saying, well, you're 3-0 up in front. What more do you want? With Tottenham being bottle jobs and having a history of bottling, bottling every goal, you just push on. Get as many goals as possible because we clearly can't defend or concentrate. So there we go. After a miserable international break, I come back to see Tottenham chuck away a 3-0 lead. Lovely stuff. Liquid football in the first half, but it doesn't matter when you see the result because who knew? If you didn't watch the game, you wouldn't know there was liquid football in the first half. You just know that West Ham have managed to come back from 3-0 down. So credit to West Ham where credit is due. We move on to the next game. Hopefully my bell shirt arrives and maybe I won't jinx Tottenham so much. But anyway, until then, remember, come on you Spurs.